Right, it's Sunday, I'm in on my own. Um, what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna show you how to build a cedar clad door. Um, we've got a shed going on this building. Um, it's a glorified shed, and we're gonna, of course, do a top end job on it as well. So it's gonna have a cedar clad door. Now, the last cedar clad door we built um, on video, when, when it opened, Jenny looked at the back of it and said, what the hell, because it weren't cedar clad at the back. The reason why it weren't cedar clad at the back was, external door is 44 mil. You've got 18 mil cedar on the front and 18 mil cedar if you put it on the back and all you end up with a door that's like that um we're using parliament hinges as it is but the door became too thick uh to to cedar on the back basically so what we're going to do is a different type we're going to use um, a sheet of hardwood ply it's 18 mil thick we're going to use that as a core and clad it on both sides and hopefully keep jenny happy with that then so i'm going to show you how to do it it's not something i've done before um now, you've got two choices there. You can either make this in the workshop. I have got thicknesses and bloody table saws and things like that, but it's site-based joinery. And I'm gonna use the tools which I have at my disposal. I'll explain why the angle grinder is gonna get used as well. Um, Makita, I'm heavily invested in Makita batteries, so all my stuff is generally Makita. Palm sander, orbital sander, uh, power plane. We've got a circular saw and we've got the Pazlod second fix 18 gauge gun. We use the 18 gauge because it makes a smaller pinhole, smaller entry hole, uh, which obviously looks more aesthetically pleasing. So I've got this 18 mil sheet apply yesterday, uh, picked it up from Wix. It was about, I think it was about 46 quid at the moment. Um, obviously price increases are going through the roof with wood and stuff like that, but it wasn't too bad a price, I don't think. Now, if I'd have bought a solid core hardwood exterior grade door, which I normally do, I know that's in excess of 90 pounds, so... There's a saving to be made already as long as it works out the way I want it to work out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just crack on with this. Um, I'll show you every stage of it and hopefully at the end we'll have a beautiful cedar clad door. Um, and I don't see why not. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to pin this straight edge to this board. It's just a piece of cedar. Um, and then I'm going to run my saw down and run the door to the size I want. Uh, not including the lipping I'm going to put on, but I'll explain all that as well. I'm just making a video if you hear me talking to myself, yeah? <laughs> so I've set the depth of, of the saw, the circular saw there, I've set it to just over 18 mil. Um, two reasons for that, I explained that the other day. Obviously it prolongs the life of your batteries as well if you're not cutting through with the full depth of the blade. And at 18 mil, it's about 19 mil I've set, the board's 18 mil, so if I cut through and my hand is underneath, I'm just gonna get a cut rather than lose my fingers, which obviously is not what we want. So what I'm gonna do as well, just for a start, I'm gonna put a pin in the middle as well, because when I push this saw up here, it's gonna to wanna to flex that cedar. So I don't have, um, what's it called? I don't have a plunge saw and a guide rail. Um, I've got enough tools as it is and I just don't need one, but obviously this works the same. The beauty of making one of these doors is you can literally make it to any size you want. Um, so if you've got a particular opening that you need to match, then this is your option as well. Uh, it's a nice finish as well, looks spot on when it's done. Right, so that's, that's the basis, that's the core of the door. Um, what I've done, I've made it smaller than what I need because I'm going to lip the door as well with cedar. So what I need to do now is work out how many lengths of cedar are going to finish on the door. Now, I know full well that a piece of cedar finishes at 84 mil, so I have got just shy of 700. Divide that by 84, which gives me 8.3 pieces. So what I don't want, I don't want a little sliver at each side, so what I'm gonna try and do is work it out so that my cedar falls and I've got parallel parallel piece each side basically right so what's happened here um, I've worked it out and I've just found that I'm gonna end up with a little piece which obviously divided by two is gonna give me a little sliver which I don't want so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna mark that there because that's where I'm gonna trim that board down to there I'm gonna put a mark there that cedar there I'm gonna cut that um, the groove off so what I'm gonna do now is rip the ply down to down another 20 odd mil there, whatever that is, let me see. Down another 22 mil, um, so that it falls nice for the boards. Like I say, um, because I'm making the door to suit, I can literally make it any size I want, so another 25 mil off it won't make any difference. 
So as with that, I'll obviously rip that cedar down, get rid of the tongue off, uh, the groove off of that, and working my way along then, I'll then rip my end piece down as well. So that will suit the door perfect. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to rip my first piece of cedar down, get that nice and straight, get that planted on and start pinning and working my way across. Right, so I'm happy with that piece now. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to run the planer down there and tidy the edge off a little bit. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let them all fly over the bottom just a little bit. Um, the reason for that being is the door's getting cut down to height anyway. So it doesn't have to be dead perfect as long as I get the top right. So there, that's my, my starter piece. Um, what I need to do now is fix it and pin it to there. But what's gonna happen then is I'm gonna put a lip in on it. And what I don't want is, what I don't want is a dead straight edge against the lip in there because if it slightly opens or anything, because it is an exterior door, then it's not gonna look very attractive. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run the power plane down there and just take a slight little bevel off the end of that. Um, the power plane there's got a groove in it. I don't know if you can see that. Get that bit of foam off it there. It's got a groove in it there. So when that sits on there, it provides like a little bevel. Um, got some window foam stuck on there. It was stuck to the floor in the house this morning. So that's my first piece. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue it to the board. I'm going to get some nails and all. I'm using this five minute wood glue. Um, it's polyurethane glue. It goes off, not in quite in five minutes, but it's close enough for me. So um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm dead, dead flush with the end of that as well, so I've got no gaps. And use a combination square for that. Um, we're also gonna use stainless steel pins to pin this. Now, I've only got 50 mil stainless steel pins, and that is where the grind is gonna come into play as well, because obviously, <clears throat> when I pin that, it's going to fire straight through that board um, and I'm going to need to clad the other side as well. So I'm going to just grind the nails off, um, the pins, sorry. And then when we clad the other side, that will be all concealed. But obviously when the other side is clad, you've got the depth then. So the 50 mil will be fine. Um, but like I say, it's sort of like just, you know, making do with what we've got rather than being in the workshop. Um, and for all them that like, there's a few of you that's tried to compare me. <laughs> So you know Rob Clevett, well, I'm not trying to be Rob Clevett, that's like trying to compare uh, Gordon Ramsay to a guy who flips burgers in a fast food place, isn't it, really? Um, he's a master craftsman and I'm just building garden rooms. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a load of glue on that. What I'm also gonna do as well, um, I'll tell you in a minute why, I know this side here is going to be my hinge side. So what we don't want to do is fire pins through where my hinge is going to go, which obviously won't be ideal. Um, I haven't even got clamps with me, so. Obviously it's sliding on the glue, which is a bit of a problem for me. I get one pin in there. There we go, I'm happy with that. So. Um, I'll show you the entry hole on that as well. Um, it's very small on the 18 gauge. What I might actually do is fill this as well because it's a, a door and I want, to, I want it to look mint. Get my first one dead right. Right, so, like I said, um, I know this is hinge size, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark up where my hinges are gonna go. The full door will be getting sanded, so I'm not bothered about marking it. Um, 
I'll mark out where the hinges are going to go. And then what I won't do is pin there so that when <coughs> I come to chop my hinges out, I'm not going to be hitting nails. So what I'm doing now, I'm fixing this where it's not going to be seen. And then of course, through the groove, which is never seen anyway. And you'll see shortly when I've done this, um, the nails on the other side, I'll, I'll flip it over and you can have a look. And I'll, but literally I'm just gonna grind them off. So there you go, that's your first piece in. I've marked up for my hinges. I've not, I've not, um, I've not nailed where the hinges are gonna go because obviously I don't want to be pinning through them. What I wanna do, um, this is all sort of like shed grade cedar that we've had for a while now. Um, and we did okay with the customer, that's what we were using, but I am gonna sand it up and still make it look nice. Right, so I'm going to give it a quick sand over now, um, just to make sure I'm happy with the finish of it, before I cut the tops of it. So there you go, I've run that over with some 80 grit, um, I'm happy with the finish on that. Um, what I'll do is obviously sand it with some, uh, what I'll obviously do is sand it with some finer grit later, but I just want to make sure everything was right. I still kept my marks for my hinges because um, when I put my when I put my lipping on the side there, I don't want to pin, pin them either. Um, I need to do the same where the lock's going as well, just so that when I drill it, I'm not hitting pins. Um, and when I'm routing out the hinges, I'm not hitting them as well. You can see the expanding glues forming up there. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut the top of the door. I'm going to cut the bottom of the door, and that will be that side of the door. Um, I'm then going to lip the door and then drop the infills in on the back side as well. But we're going to do the back sides horizontal rather than vertical just to change it a little bit. So I'm going to flip it over now and I'm also going to realise that I've either A, glued it to the workbench or B, pinned it. Um, we're good on the front there. Yeah, it's just the bottom. There we go. Um, so like I said, I've only got 50mm pins with me. Now, obviously they're not ideal and I'll show you why they're not ideal, but it's what I've got and it's what we're using. So there you go, they've all come through. Um, I'll just show you that with a bit of a, get the phone out and show you. There you go, so the 50 mil pins have all come through. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna grind them off, but obviously when I clad on this side, they won't come through the other side. So I'll, I'll, I'll grind all them off and then we can start by trimming down the top of the door, trimming down the bottom, and then we're gonna make the lip pins as well. So that's that, that's all the pins ground off. Um, I've ground them down, ground them a little bit flat as well so that they're definitely not gonna stick up. Um, I know what's gonna happen now, I'm gonna get loads of people slagging me down saying how rough I am, but it's site joinery and it's, uh, it's all about design and build, isn't it? Right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm now gonna cut the top of this door off and I know that depth of my guide on my blade um, like I said before I don't have a plunge saw it's just another thing to carry around with me and we don't do these very often so what I'm going to do I'm just going to hold that on there like that I've already set the depth of my blade Be 
because that cuts on the upward stroke, I know that the other side of that will be lovely when I turn it over. <laughs> It's going to sand off them burrs there. Um, what I'm going to do exactly the same on the bottom now as well. Determine what height I'm going to make my door at. Obviously, this door is made to suit for me. You can make absolutely any size you want. Well, within reason, if you've got sheet of ply anyway, that's for sure. And so far, it's working out okay. just to clean that up, take any burrs off that door. Right, um, another reason why I'm not going to be Rob Clever is because I buy crap like that. Um, but I do know that in a couple of weeks I'll be using one of these chisels to bray a bolt around or something like that or smash something else out and absolutely destroy it. So I've literally bought that from Wix, seven pound or something like that. Just literally just to scrape the glue off the door, which it's serving its purpose. I've got none there, I've got a load down this side. Right, I'm just going to run the sander down there. So, what I need to do now is make the lippings. Now, I know that the cedar is 18 mil or thereabouts and the ply is 18 mil. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to offer a piece of ply onto there like that. And then I'm just going to measure the depth of that there, which it's coming in at 53 mil. Is it 53? Glasses are crap. Well, I'm going to make the lippings at 53 mil. Um, might have made them at 54 actually, and then sand them down once I've got the infills in. Just in case there's any, de any deviation in the thickness of the timber, I'll just try there as well. Um, no, I've got about 52.5, 53. So I'm going to make them at 54. Right, so lippings at door. Um, I'm going to get one out of each piece of cedar. Like I said before, um, all this cedar, once upon a time, came from Duffields and it was absolutely, well, some of it were mint, some of it wasn't. Um, but at the cost of it, it, it was never getting binned anyway, that's for sure. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to rip down some of this and lip, lip the door. Uh, so I've got two legs and a head there. What I'm going to do, uh, what did I say I'm going to make it? 53, was it? 53, yeah. So first of all, I'll take the groove off. Um, and then what I'll do then, um, I'll, I'll rip it down at 54 and that will be my sides and my head. I've got a nasty habit of putting my finger on the trigger when I'm adjusting the depth for that, which I need to stop because it's going to take a momentary lapse of concentration and the fingers will be gone. Now, obviously, a table saw would make this a lot easier, but again, it's just another tool for me to carry on my own on a Sunday, and I sack that off. So what I'm going to do, I'm literally going to score down the door because it doesn't matter now because it's going to get clad over. <laughs> Uh, 
Right. So there's my two sides and my head. Um, memory being where it is, I've forgotten what my measurement's going to be. So 54 mil was my measurement, which I need. And I'm going to flip that round and rip these down to 54 mil. Right, so they're my lippings, my door lippings, edgings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm just going to test that now. That's a, it's a little bit proud, but the reason why I've done it a little bit proud is because I want to sand it flat then. Um, when, when the other side. Annoying when this camera keeps stopping, and I have no idea where it's stopping, so it's going to be where it'll be, I'm afraid, people. Um, so that there is my door lipping. I'll just show you on this. Right, there's your door lipping. I've cut a mitre on there. I'm now going to bond it to the side of there and pin it as well. What I'm going to do now, I'll show you this detail. Um, I'm just going to put a little bevel on that there because it's going to meet the other side of the door. <laughs> Just try and show you that detail a bit better there now. Like I said, the camera keeps stopping. I've no idea why, which is a pain in the ass. So if we've missed some of this, I do apologise. Right, so that's going to go like that. Let's show you now. Actual quality of this iPhone is amazing. So that's going to go like that. I don't know if you can see the little bevel I've just created on there. So it'll be bevel to bevel, um, and then because obviously I won't get be able to get into sand that afterwards. It's a bit messy with this glue, but that's what I bought that chisel so I can clean it up. Um, I will give you a little close-up detail of everything once I've done it. So I'm just going to offer that into place now. Make sure I'm happy with its location. I'm going to use that square edge there just to make sure it's in the right height. And then I'm going to double pin that. I'm going to get myself down to here. Again, make sure it's in the right location. Pin it up. Same on the bottom. Which obviously it's curled a little bit. I'm just going to pull that off that edge there just so I can get it down to where I want it. Make sure I'm happy with that, which I am. Just force that down a little bit there. Let's pull that up there because I've just pushed it down a little bit too far. So I don't fix where my hinges are going or come out the face of my door, which I don't want, obviously. Again, now, because I've got the 50 mil pins, I'm not going to be seen now. Um, so that's that lipping on. Now I'm going to put the head on, which is going to go there. Again, put a little sand bevel on there. <laughs> but before I fix that one, what I need to do now is obviously measure up this other one as well. 
pencils down there. Got me two mitres on there. Just a little bit shy is that one. Get that glued up. I'm going to glue my mitres as well. Um, it does clean off pretty well, this five minute glue. But as I said time and time again, it's an exterior door and it's wood and it's out in the weather and it is going to move. So, not the best will in the world, you're going to get opening sometimes. Pop that in there. Just drive that home to where it needs to be. Obviously this is the head of the door, um, you're never going to see the fixings in there. Cut my mitre on that, I'm happy with that. This is why it's shed grey because when it goes in band, you just end up walking all over it like I just have done then. Um, which is crazy the cost of it really. Then I'm going to determine which is my bottom side, that's my bottom side there. So that I want just a little sand bevel put on there. I'm gonna move that across there so I can get in. Uh, just glue all over that there now. Right, um, Again, I'm going to glue the mitre. <laughs> Again, just hold it into place. Make sure we're happy with the position. I use a block of wood on the bottom there just to locate it properly. Which I am. Happy with that. Um, all I've left to do now is to infill the inside, which I've told you I'm going to do horizontally just to change things a little bit. Um, and what we'll do then, we'll start to sand it up once this glue's sort of seeped out finally where it's going to go. <laughs> I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is go for it and start gluing it and get it pinned. Just make sure in that I've got a good angle on these pins and they're not coming through, which obviously is not what we're aiming for. Right, there you go. Um, that's your cedar door, that's the back side of it. Um, I'm gonna give that blast over now with the sandpaper, uh, get rid of any glue, and then flip it over, do the other side and all, uh, with the orbital rather, and see how we're looking.
Right, so what we need to do with this side now is go down and clean all the glue off it. Um, obviously the expanding glues seep through the joints. Uh, we'll get that off with a chisel. And then we'll sand it and once practically we've made. Okay, so there you see the clad door. Um, it's 18 mil core, ply in the middle, um, and then the cedar on both sides. It's born from the fact that Jenny didn't like the idea that we left it inside of the garden room store cupboard with just um, we just apply face door. So we've cedar clad both sides of that. We've ended up with a door that is approximately 55 mil thick. Um, a standard external door is 44 mil, so we're just slightly above that. We can use normal hinges on this now. So we've done away with the Parliament hinges. We've also done away with the fact that we haven't used a fire door as well, um, but that's still a solid door. So you've got cedar horizontally that way. That will be the internal of the store. And please remember, it is just a store cupboard. And that will be the external of the door as well, vertical, which will match the face of the building. So what have I used basically? Um, I've used a Makita's palm sander, a power planer, angle grinder to cut the nails off because I only had 50 mil nails, but you make do, I suppose. Um, circular saw which was pretty pretty um, important to cut down the ply rip down everything else as well um, I've got a table saw I've got thickness and stuff like that but it's just more convenient to use what I've got on site still get a practically spot-on finish as well and there's a nice solid stable door there I've just had a look down there it's nice and straight so if you're gonna do this door this might be the option for you now um, rather than getting a fire door and building a big old thick door. I think the other doors were 68 mil thick or something like that. So we had to use parliament hinges for them. Uh, this you'll get away with normal fire euro hinges as well. So that'll be the external. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to let either Davey or Jenny sand that up to... to um, there's a little bit of glue down the gaps there and also I'll just get them to sand that and finish it before it, oil, before it gets oiled and before Jenny fits it. So if you like what you've watched, this is the kind of thing we do on a regular basis. It's all design and build. Um, we just kind of like, I suppose you could say we make it up as we go along, but you know, we get there in the end and it's the right finish that we're, we're achieving. So if you'd like to like and subscribe, that'll be fantastic. And we're starting a new build soon and we're going to film it all the way through, hopefully. So that might be interesting for you to watch as well. Thank you.